So today we'll be going over thin wad pressure vessels which are commonly used in industries such as boilers or even um, having fluids in pressurized tanks for any kind of transportation. Now when it comes for pressure vessels being thin wad, that means the ratio of the inner radius of a, let's say a cylindrical tank or even a spherical tank, the inner radius divided by the wall thickness of that pressure vessel must be greater or equal to 10. So this is what would be considered a thin wad pressure vessel such that across the thickness of the wall the stress distribution is um, distributed equally or uniformly. So let's say we have this pressure vessel here, a cylindrical tank, and we have it at whatever pressure level. Now at the ends of it, this pressure is going to be distributed along the wall here as well as the other side. And looking at it from this perspective, having the pressures being applied to either sides of the wall, if you were to take a cross section here, you will see along that thin wall, you're going to have an axial stress developed. So there are actually two types of stresses when it comes to pressure vessels. And you have the axial stress and the hoop stress. So for, so for this one in this um, case, if you were to take a cutout of this section, let's go ahead and draw out that cutout exposing the internal stresses. So if you were to take a cutout of that cylindrical pressure vessel, you would see that we have this axial stress developed within the thin wall of the vessel here. And of course, this also corresponds to a resultant force F A because we know that stress is equal to the force divided by the cross-sectional area and so we have this resultant force due to this uniformly distributed stress and of course this stress is being caused by the pressure that we have in the vessel so this pressure is actually what's producing this axial stress within that um, thin wad vessel here and of course this pressure also co corresponds to you could say a resultant force um, RP here so in this case all you have to do to be able to come up with the axial stress formula is to do nothing more than your equilibrium equation the sum of forces in along the x direction here is equal to zero let's say going to the right is positive so we have the resultant force rp in this case going to the left so it's going to be negative rp and plus fa is equal to zero and, and from here we could plug in the fa which is equal to the axial stress times the cross-sectional area and rp is the pressure times the cross-sectional area as well so we have force a being equivalent to the axial stress times the cross-sectional area of that thin wad pressure vessel which is pi d times the thickness times the stress and we have RP being equal to that cross-sectional area, in this case the whole cross-sectional area of the cylindrical wall, pi over 4 times the diameter squared. We plug it into this equilibrium equation and then we go ahead and solve for the axial stress here. So this is our axial stress equation which is equal to the pressure times the internal diameter divided by four times that wall thickness. Now I mentioned previously there's also a hoop stress developed within that pressure vessel so let's go ahead and look at that same pressure vessel only from a different perspective here. So now if we look at that same cylindrical tank here but we look at the cross section we also know that we have the internal pressure being directed along the entire wall of that vessel in all directions right always normal to the surface here so this is the internal pressure so if we went ahead and cut up this section again to do the force analysis to look at the internal forces or internal stresses developed in this material due to the pressure um, let's go ahead cut it up and draw the right section of this so now if we cut it up the cylindrical ve vessel from this side, now we have the internal pressure here and we see that the vertical uh, forces for this pressure cancels out when it comes to a symmetrical geometry, but we do have that resultant force 
due to the pressure here, let's call it RP again. And within the wall, we notice this, what we call the hoop stress along that pressure vessel thin wall. And this also causes a resultant force. Let's call it FH. And we do the exact same thing as we previously done, use our equilibrium equations along the x-axis, the forces along the x is equal to zero. So we have the resultant force P take away FH is equal to zero. And we know that RP is equal to the cross-sectional area times the pressure, which is equivalent to the internal diameter times the length of that cylindrical vessel times the pressure here and FH is 2 times the wall thickness times the length of, times the hoop stress here. So now once you plug in these to the equilibrium equation, you see that the L's will in fact cancel out and the hoop stress here of this pressure vessel is the pressure times the internal diameter divided by 2 times the wall thickness, and this is your hoop stress. Now, if you go ahead and compare it when it comes to analyzing a pressure vessel here, compare your hoop and your axial stresses developed due to the internal pressure, we could see that the hoop stress is equal to two times of the axial stress here. So basically what this tells us, the hoop stress will always be greater than the axial stress by two times. So when it comes to designing any pressure vessel, we always go with the worst case scenario. And in this case, the highest stress developed will govern the design of that pressure vessel. So in this case, we always design pressure vessels based off the hoop stress and not the axial stress, mainly because the hoop will always be a greater value. And that's what we need to design for. So it won't fail under that hoop stress. Now, similarly, when it comes to having a spherical tank with a internal pressure, the hoop stress for a spherical tank specifically is equal to that pressure times the internal diameter divided by four times the wall thickness. And this is also equivalent to the axial stress specifically for a spherical tanks. So these are the equations that you need to keep in mind when it comes to analyzing any cylindrical tanks or spherical. So for this problem statement, we have a spherical gas tank has an inner radius of 1.5 meters. If it is subjected to an internal pressure of 300 kilopascals, determine its required thickness if the maximum normal stress is not to exceed 12 megapascals. So in this case, we have a criteria to be met, the maximum axial stress not to exceed 12 megapascals. And as we previously seen, the axial stress for a spherical tank is equivalent to the hoop stress as well. It's the exact same equation. We have the internal pressure of 300 kilopascals and the internal radius of 1.5 meters. Now, in this case, we're asked to solve what is the thickness such that the axial stress won't exceed 12 megapascals. So here's the equation that we're going to be using. The axial or the hoop stress specifically for a spherical tank is equal to the internal pressure times the diameter divided by 4 times t. Now, of course, you change up some stuff and you actually solve for the thickness here, which is what we're asked to do. And so we have the pressure times the diameter divided by 4 times the, that stress here. And we just go ahead and plug in the numbers and solve for that required thickness. So we have 300 kilopascals times 3 meters, which is just 2 times the internal radius to find diameter, divided by 4 um, times 12,000 kilopascals. Keep in mind, keeping uniform um, units so they could cancel. And we get wall thickness required is 0 0.01875 meters or 18.75 millimeters. And this is how you solve. Now, for this problem statement, we have the steel water pipe has an inner diameter of 12 inches and wall thickness of 0.25 inches. If the valve A is closed and the water pressure is 300 pounds per square inch, determine the longitudinal and hoop stress developed in the wall of the pipe. So in this case, we're asked both for the longitudinal or the axial stress as well as the hoop stress. So let me go ahead and rewrite these equations here. 
So since in this case, all you have is a cylindrical tank, that's the equations we're going to be using, the axial and the hoop stress for a cylindrical tank. And since we have all the parameters needed to go ahead and solve, it's nothing more than plugging in each of the values here and solving for your axial and hoop stress accordingly. So for the axial stress or the longitudinal stress, we actually have 3,600 pounds per square inch. Now let's go ahead and solve for the hoop stress. And for the hoop stress, we have 7,200 pounds per square inch. And this is where you see the worst case scenario or the highest stress developed for this pressure vessel would in fact be the hoop stress. And this is what you should be using in terms of designing the pressure vessel such that it won't fail. Because if you happen to use the longitudinal stress, um, you're going to design it for for it to only handle 3600 pounds per square inch but it could actually for the same pressure um, you'll develop twice that of stress when it, when you're looking at the hoop stress specifically so this is why we're always looking at the worst case scenario or the highest stress developed in the pressure vessel in this case we would utilize the hoop stress and this is how you saw for the stress developed for a thin water pressure vessel